everybody, Donna Schwartz here in this Facebook Live session. Thanks for joining me. I had some really, really terrific questions this week. In fact, I had a whole bunch. And I tried to put them together into a theme. And the theme to me seemed about, it's, it's about tone, definitely, but it's also about breathing. So um, I wanted to address those questions. And then I had another question with regard to playing things that are faster. So here's what I want to do first. Um, I'm Donna Schwartz from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site with practical tips and solutions to help you improve your music performance skills. So definitely check it out. And what you can get for free right now is a free video, three tips to fatten up your saxophone tone. So I want to start off with the playing faster question. Um, the per this person messaged me and said, um, I'm having a problem playing you know, certain passages faster. And he basically said he's doing all the right things. Well, what's the right things? Slowing it down, um, taking things at like 50% speed in the Amazing Slow Downer, which is a great app, absolutely great app. And I said to him, you're basically, you're doing the right things, but I want to expand upon that answer. First things first, there is no shortcut to trying to learn how to play something fast. Um, I've got something that um, I'm playing with one of my bands where it goes, it goes really fast. Um, you know, it's really it's fast tonguing, it's fast fingering, and I can't just, you know, you can't just pick up the horn and expect to play that without having the experience of either playing those types of things first or having seen those types of things first. So there are no shortcuts. You do have to slow things down. So if you've got a passage like what I just played, start off by playing it that way. Set your metronome at a ridiculously slow tempo, like, I don't know, maybe 48 or something like that, where you're going, let's see. Now once I set it there, before I start playing, here's a big tip. Don't just start playing. You've got to feel, this is my quarter note, you've got to feel eight notes. And on top of that, if I'm playing 16th notes, you've got to feel 16th. So, in addition to setting that metronome slow, you've got to subdivide. That's what we call subdividing. Um, I also like to call it feeling the small beats and the really, really small beats. If you're not feeling those, you're going to have a really hard time playing something fast later on because you're not going to have that conception, that feeling of the rhythm. We don't read rhythms, we feel them. Okay, that's really, really crucial. Okay, so that's my first tip for you. And again, it's not a shortcut, it's just to help you along. This next tip, though, will help you. And again, it's not a shortcut. If you're playing something uh, like I just played, or and in fact, the thing that uh, this person sent me was, um, let me hear it in my head. I think it was something like this. <laughs> about that. If you're reading it, you have the advantage of kind of looking at it. Look at the passage that you're about to play. Analyze it. Aside from looking at the key signature and the meter signature, does anything repeat? Okay? Do exact things repeat? Do 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 do. Well, yeah, that happened a couple of times. Do 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 do. Well, that time when I went and I played it on the 4 chord, first I started on the 1 chord, then I played on the 4 chord. Isn't it the same thing? except it's transposed up. So look for patterns. If you see patterns, it's going to help you to read but also hear things quicker and catch on to it like that. Um, it'll also, another thing that can help you too, a lot of times people just practice scales. Why not practice arpeggios? Arpeggios will force you to, for some people especially, move out of your comfort zone because you're skipping notes. And I don't just mean, you know, just a major arpeggio, I mean minor arpeggios, sevenths, all that kind of stuff. The more of those you practice, that's going to help not only your reading, your, it's going to help your hearing, it's going to help you hear chords, the harmonies, and it's going to help your jazz playing, uh, definitely, without a doubt. Um, but also with, with the arpeggios, it's going to build your fingering technique. Now this person also said he's going to, he's about to resort to the double-sided tape <laughs> technique where you put double-sided tape on the keys. 
um, in order to keep his, his fingers down. You know, um, that's an, to, to me, that's an extreme measure. I did mention it, you know, if, if you have to do that. But you know what? Um, I think before you do that, be more relaxed. Be more relaxed in your arms. There's a tendency when we play things that are fast to tense up. And if you, for example, if you make a fist right now, make that fist. It's not just your, your hand that's tight. I already feel it in my elbow. I feel it in my shoulder. I actually feel it in my shoulder blades. I feel it down my back. Now relax it. And now I'm much more relaxed. It's a lot easier to finger. So that's the third thing I'm going to say about that too. So we want to look for patterns. We want to practice things like arpeggios. And we want to be relaxed when we're playing things that are faster. Okay. Aside from the standard information, uh, the standard tips of slowing it down. All right, and with that slowing down, you set that metronome, you've got to hear and feel the small beats. Okay, so I hope that helped with that question about um, how to play things that are faster. Okay, on to the breathing stuff. So um, this person wrote me, let's see, okay. She said, you know, she, uh, she's you know, playing the saxophone for a little bit and she's still trying to get away from breathing through her nose. Now, it's interesting because with brass players, that is so common breathing through the nose when, you, when you're a beginner. I can't even begin to tell you. Um, I see that all the time in students, and I don't remember if I started out that way. I don't think so. I think I just didn't breathe. <laughs> it's really hard because you've got this mouthpiece here, and you're expected to, you know, somehow get air in without sucking it in through the horn, which can be really disgusting. You're somehow supposed to get air in and then close your lips and blow, you know, in a certain amount of time. That's a really tricky skill to master, but it's a skill that can be mastered. In terms of a saxophone or a clarinet or, you know, an oboe, you, you've got a little bit more options. Even though you've got a mouthpiece in your mouth, you don't have to set your lips together in order to, to buzz. So you have that little bit of advantage. So when we're breathing, the best way to do that on the saxophone or clarinet it's, that's not the best way. It's, it's, it's what I do. Um, some people um, disagree with me and do it a little differently, and that's perfectly fine. Whatever works for you. Um, I still keep my teeth on the top. Yes, I keep my teeth on the top. If, you're not, if your teeth aren't on the top, or some people have a double lip embouchure and they, they have their top lip on the top, um, that's fine. But you've got to keep something on the top. It's kind of like an anchor in a way. So I keep my teeth on the top. Or I kind of open the sides, and I kind of lessen the pressure on the reed. So, um, so that's one way to actually do the physical act of breathing. But here's the thing with, with breathing. I'm going to go through a couple of things here. You want your breath to be inspired by the music. <laughs> okay, so if you're playing what I just played, do 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 I'm hearing it in my head so that I breathe for what I'm playing. When you talk... You're not aware that you're breathing. If you start to make yourself aware when you're talking, when you're breathing, it's going to kind of mess you up. You take in enough air to say what you need to say. Why not do the same thing on an instrument? It's the same thing. So if I have do 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 right something like that. I'm hearing it in my head. One, two, three. I'm going to take in enough air for that phrase or for whatever I'm playing. So you want your breathing to be inspired by what the music is coming up. Now, how to physically do it? Well, I kind of showed you here. This is what I do. Some people, um, think. Some people lift up their top uh, teeth when they breathe. Um, for me, I can't do that, and that you know that's fine. And whatever works for you, but you do have to open up your mouth. Um, you know, in order to breathe, you got to get air in. Oh, and by the way, air is free. Use it. That's what I was told by Vince Penzarella many, many years ago. Air is free. Use it. Okay? It's one of the few things that are free. Okay, so definitely open your, up your mouth when you're playing. Now, uh, this, this next portion is going to deal with another question that someone had for me, and this totally relates to breathing, even though it was a posture question. Posture and breathing totally relate. If you're sitting there like a slump, like a slouch, do you think you're going to get a, you know, a nice big breath? I don't think so. So uh, he asked, actually he asked about hand position. 
but he also asked about horn position. Here's what I find with a lot of beginners, especially if they're sitting down. They tend to sit down and they tend to slump over. They slump over to the side, the horn's over here, their legs are like, you know, a collapsed and all that kind of thing, and they're wondering why they don't sound good. Well, the thing is this, you need to, if you're seated, you need to be seated up straight. I like to sit at the edge of the chair, really important. Most of the, most chairs, the backs of those chairs are not designed for good posture, okay, unless you've got a great ergonomic chair, but highly unlikely, especially in schools. Sit up on the edge of the chair, feet flat on the floor, 90 degree angle, the horn rests against the side of your right thigh, okay? If you're an alto player and you're tall enough, the horn's going to be, you know, in the middle. Um, but that's the seating position. When you're standing, you want to be standing, um, you want to be standing so that your shoulders are back, all right? You want to be thinking about standing against the wall, okay? So the back of your head, your butt, your shoulder blades, your heels are against the wall, and that's how you want to stand. A lot of times, and, and um, I do this sometimes too, a lot of times saxophone players will do this. My shoulder blades are forward. That actually really does prohibit your playing, okay? You may want to look cool on the stage, and that's awesome, but you know what? Wouldn't you rather sound really good? I remember seeing uh, Katja Riekerman at, uh, where was it? Was it Vibratos? I think so. And she's a great player. Um, phenomenal player. But I was so, you know, not only taken back by her playing and her tone, but her posture was like, holy cow, it was like perfect. And she looked cool and she sounded great. Perfect posture. Shoulder blades back. You know, she had the horn up really well. Um, great posture, and that's why she sounded fantastic, and, you know, her solo was really amazing, too. So you can look cool and have good posture. Now, the question to me, and again, this all relates to breathing, um, you know, proper horn position. If you go to the horn, that's it. You're done. The horn comes to you, all right? You're in control. Last week I said you need to control the reed. The reed can't control you. You need to control the horn. The horn can't control you. So you need to bring that horn to you. Some people don't have their neck strap or harness up high enough, okay? In fact, I'm going to raise mine just a little bit right now. By the way, this harness that I use is the Van Doren FNH 100 harness. It is awesome, okay? This is great for posture because there's nothing. It's not going in the back of my neck. All the weight is concentrated really in the back through the Space H design, which I don't think you can see with this Facebook video. Unfortunately, they cut out quite a bit. But this is an awesome, awesome harness. And I, I'm not an endorser, but I always plug things that work. This works. So you want to make sure your neck straps up high enough. What I always say to people, you know, bring the horn to you. How do you do it? You take your right thumb, put it under the thumb rest. It's not a thumb rest. Your thumb is certainly not resting. And you push the horn away from you. Push the bell away. The horn goes right in your mouth. Boom. Just like that. Okay? That's how you bring the horn to you. Now, standing position. For an alto, usually it's, you know, directly in front. For tenor, um, I tend to play, yeah, you know what? I pretty much play in front, but I actually rest the tenor the bell of the tenor on my right thigh when I'm standing up. I know some people that hold it straight out. That's cool. Uh, I know some guys that rest the tenor against their right thigh. And they're not slouched. They're just they're playing it like that, playing it kind of on an, on an angle. A little bit like a Lester Young type of thing. So you need to find the, uh, the standing position that's right for you, but also that doesn't make you collapse. Okay, collapse your shoulder blades and stuff. Now, getting back into the breathing. And I have to admit, I'm trying to hold up a sneeze right now. <laughs> Getting back to the breathing. If you're slouched, you're not totally filling up. Totally filling up doesn't mean just your stomach area. Your lungs go past your collarbone. All right? So if you're like this, you're, you're, I could feel the tension right there. You don't want to breathe with tension. So what you want to think about is totally filling up and filling up past your collarbone. Okay, so that's the other tip that goes along with the breathing through the nose. We want to try to avoid that as much as possible. And um, the posture, you know, which is the horn position, your hand position. And the hand position also, I kind of answered with the other question. If you're tight anywhere, if your hands are tight, if your uh, forearms are tight, your elbows are tight, 
you're going to have a harder time fingering something faster because there's tension there. So you got to relax. You got to definitely relax. Just place your fingers on the keys. And as I was told by um, a teacher in New York and a friend of mine who reminded me, rest or press. Okay, this goes for trumpet too. Your fingers rest on the keys or they press. Rest, press, rest, press, rest, press. That's all you do. Okay, and that's going to help you with fingering faster as well. So hopefully I answered those questions with regard to, just looking at my notes here, with regard to playing faster and breathing. Um, someone asked, how can I get a sound like that? And that was the sound that I got, um, that I was, you know, the sound that I get on my videos and all that kind of stuff. How can I get a sound like that without upgrading my mouthpiece and ligature? I shot a video recently called The Horn or You? What really makes the sound? Check it out on YouTube. Um, what I did with that video, I used what I call a student setup. So I had a no-name brand stock mouthpiece. I don't even know the tip opening of the thing. Something that I would use when I was teaching in school and I had to check out a, a student's tenor. By the way, when you're checking out your student's equipment, don't use you know, your high-end mouthpiece and that kind of thing because you may be able to blow past any problems that they're having. You want to use uh, comparable, you know, mouthpiece. Um, I don't want to say comparable reads. You need something that works, but a comparable mouthpiece so that you could try to imitate or emulate the problem that your student's having. So anyway, I, I had this stock mouthpiece for tenor, and I had this, uh, what I call my third horn, my beach horn. Um, it's a great horn. It's a great, like, student model horn. It's a Selmer knockoff. So I played that setup. And then I played my normal setup, which is the Theo Wani mouthpieces. This is a Gaia 7 and then my uh, Selmer Mark 6. And I showed in that video that I still sound like me. Is there a little bit of a difference in the sound? Yeah. But the thing is, the thing is this, and I, I keep saying this, you're the one that makes the sound, not the equipment. So, you know, this person asks, how can I get a sound like you? Um, I'm not going to say practice because that's, that's obvious, okay, but there's a whole bunch of other factors that are involved and it has to do with the foundation of how you approach playing, how you approach breathing, how you approach music, all right, it's just, that's the bottom line. So, you know, if you're, um, you know, you're thinking that you have to spend $700 on a mouthpiece, you don't. Now, you're probably saying to me, well, you're a, you're a psycho, you spent $700 on this mouthpiece. Yeah, I did, because... You get to a point where after you've reached, um, or after you've worked on your core, your foundation, um, you start to get limited by what your equipment has for you. And then at that point, then you're looking for something that's going to match the sounds in your head. Okay, that's really, really super important. You know, you're not trying to sound like uh, David Sanborn or Michael Brecker. You're trying to sound like you, okay? And in fact, um, on my Facebook page, I, I just found an interview with Mindy Abair and uh, my friend Ed Barker, and she said the exact same thing, you know, you, you sound like you, but you get to a point where you want something, you want your equipment to help you to express yourself, to be able to match those sounds that you're hearing in your head, and that's when you would change, okay, when you're limited by your equipment in terms of expressing yourself, and when you're limited by your equipment in terms of, you know, getting range, and, uh, you know, playing high and low and stuff like that. When you're limited, then you need to go into, uh, a, a, you know, researching, careful research of the next steps, you know, for upgrading your equipment. But I will say this, for that person that asked the question, which, thank you, um, how can I get a sound like you without upgrading? Um, again, check out my website because there's that, the free video you can get, three tips to fatten up your sound. And I, I kind of address that in there. And I also have other tips on my website that can help you. So definitely, definitely check that out. And something's going to be coming out really soon that's going to totally answer that question for you. So definitely sign up for my newsletter, and you're going to get more information on that. Only my subscribers are going to be getting that information. So definitely sign up. Um, okay, let me see. I have some questions. Hey, guys, thanks for joining. Um, okay, for the next video. Yeah, I'm going to do this for the next video because I'm, this is going a little bit long. What can I do if my bottom lip slides to wrong position, more to inside to the mouth? Okay, we'll definitely talk about that next time, uh, next time deleting. Absolutely. Okay, so if there are no more other questions, hopefully this video helped you with regards to your breathing, your posture, playing faster passages, but also seeing how everything's connected. Everything's definitely connected. How? The music inspires you. It inspires your breathing. It inspires your 
feeling of the rhythms and feeling of the subdivision. It inspires your, your interpretation of the music. It inspires good posture because you want to play well, all right, and good tongue. All right, so on that note, thanks for joining me. Um, if you're watching this on the replay, please like it, please share it. Share it with your saxophone, uh, music educator, musician friends, you know, if th you think this will help them. And certainly please sign up for my website so you get the weekly newsletters with practical tips to help you with your music performance issues. Thanks again for joining me. Take care. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.